Welcome. It's midday moment. Midday moment. Welcome to midday moment. Welcome to Midday Moments. I am redeemed. redeemed. I've been bought with a price. But with a price. Welcome to Midday Moment. Jesus has changed my heart. Welcome to Midday Moment. If anybody, if anybody has you, just do I tell them I've been redeemed. Tell them I am Welcome to Midday Moment. It's Wednesday. Bought with Christ. Bought for every a price. Jesus, Jesus has changed my Day moments. Thank you for joining us. How grateful I am that you are taking some time at whatever time you are viewing this to join us for this time of impartation. It is our midday, midweek moment. It is the time that I get just to pour in for a few moments something inspirational from the Word of God. Let me invite you now to join me in a word of prayer. God our Father, how thankful we are you have given us another day, another opportunity to speak a word from your word and to speak a word about you. God, we grateful, we graciously thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you that life is as well as it is. Oh God, we pray now that in these moments that we have, that the words I will share will uplift someone, inspire someone, assure someone that you are still God. Thank you again for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, today, my midweek, my midday moment is entitled From Overwhelm to Overflowing. From overwhelmed to overflowing. John 10, verse 10. Jesus says, I have come in order that you might have life. Life in all of its fullness. King James talks about, I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. From overwhelmed to overflowing. You know, the moment you start doubting the goodness of God, the moment you start doubting the presence of God, and you start deciding to make decisions that just make you happy, I'm convinced that you will have all kinds of issues and all kinds of problems. But the moment you start doubting the goodness, the grace, and the will of God for your life and begin to make decisions that just revolve around making you happy, you have all kind of problems. You wind up, in my opinion, overworked, over anxious, overloaded, and just generally overwhelmed. Because whenever we take matters in our own hands, Whenever, as children of God, we decide, we think that we know what is better for us, we ultimately end up overworked, 
over anxious, overwhelmed, and overloaded. But God's promise to us is that he came that we might have an overflowing life. God doesn't promise us that we will not have a life where we will not be overwhelmed. But God promises us that we will have an overflowing life. Now may I throw in parenthetically that even though he has promised us that we will have an overflowing life, it does not mean that sometimes we might not find ourselves overwhelmed by the issues of life. But when you are operating in the overflow of God's grace and God's goodness, and you find yourself overwhelmed by the issues and the trials of life, it is the overflowing presence of God that helps you to navigate the choppy waters of life when you find yourself overloaded, overwhelmed, and overanxious. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus says, I came that you may have life, and you can have it in its fullness, in its abundantness. One of the first things I think I've learned, and I think is a principle in the Christian church, is an overflowing life may require us to experience the emptiness or the emptying of our own lives. In order to experience the overflowing life that God wants us to have, we sometimes have to empty ourselves of what's already there. You know, Christ came to this world and he ultimately had to empty himself. Christ had to empty himself so that he would ultimately rely and depend on the Father. It was the emptying of himself that really taught him how to fully and faithfully be loyal to the Father. In other words, Christ had to surrender his divinity. He had to surrender his equality. He had to become human. He had to empty himself so that he could be filled with the will and the purpose that the Father wanted him to do. There are times and there are things we all go through that I think can be a purging experience. Because sometimes we go through some things in life that purges us that prunes us. The purging and the pruning process can oftentimes be the experience we have of emptying ourselves of that which will not work with the overflowing life. Perhaps the Lord of life uses the pruning and the purging process to prepare us to be the vessels he wants us to be and to possess that overflowing life. Because in order to have an overflowing life in Christ, you really may have to give up some things. An abundant life, a full life, or overflowing life, is not a life that, that focuses on on possessions or prosperity. Oftentimes we think that living abundantly has a lot to do with prosperity, has a lot to do with possessions. But an abundant life or an overflowing life has more to do about purpose and about not what one possesses, but what possesses one. Because an overflowing life helps us to be possessed by something greater than ourselves, something more glorious than what we can see. This overflowing life is really Christ living in us. And how do you experience this abundant life? How do you experience this overflowing life? There is one habit that I think helps us to experience that, is that we have to make sure that 
we stay connected to Christ. You have to make sure that you operate uh, from that John 15 passage, when in John 15 it says to you and I that if we abide in him and he abides in us. It is that concept where in order to have overflowing abundant life, there has to be an indwelling of himself in you and I. It's really making sure that he dwells in you, that he tabernacles with you, he, he lives with you. In other words, this idea of overflowing and abundant life means that Christ is not a guest or a visitor, that Christ has a permanent residence. He's not in a guest room of your life. He has his own dwelling place. You know what happens when a cluster of grapes are cut off from the vine? When the cluster of grapes are cut off from the vine, those grapes can no longer produce Although that vine can no longer produce any more grapes because, because the vine is disconnected from the real source. The branch is disconnected from the real source. And if we're not careful, we could experience what I call the death, the spiritual death of being faithful. If we allow ourselves to be disconnected from the overflowing Abundant one who gives us life, we will find ourselves spiritually dying. We have to stay connected to the source. And whenever we, we decide that we know what is better for our lives, we know, uh, we know what, what we should do without seeking God, we find ourselves disconnected. There are so many people in this world today that they are living without hope. They are living, but they're living without hope. They're living without this infilling. And that's why the witness of the church is so important in these days that we still have a lot of work to do because we are challenged and charged with being the light of the world. We are the ones that become the example of what the overflowing of abundant life should look like. We must forever be mindful that we are the light in a dark world. We are the salt of the earth. And so it's so important for us to make sure we continue to let our light shine so that others who may be in darkness will see the light. You know, one of our greatest challenges in the body of Christ is whether or not we have the kind of testimony, whether or not we have the kind of congregation that makes people thirsty for Christ, hunger for Christ. And that's why it's so important in order for us to really have abundant life, overflowing life, we have to stay connected to the source. He is the source of life. We have to allow him to abide in him and we abide in him and he abides in us. Because God is our source of energy and power. And if you try to go through life on your own power, you're ultimately going to be overwhelmed. But if you are connected to him, you have the power you need to get through your season of overwhelm. I want to just say that again, parenthetically, just because we are living in the overflow of his grace and his goodness, just because we are living the abundant life, doesn't mean that we will not have to be overwhelmed doesn't mean that we will not be anxious, but it does mean that when we find ourselves in those seasons, because of the abundant living and because of the overflow in us, it helps us to keep our circuit from being, from going to shock. It is the abundant life, it is the overflowing life that keeps us rooted and grounded, keeps us sane when we, when we could go insane. And one of the ways I think to maintain this idea of the abundant living or the overflowing life is that we have to be intentional in having what I call quiet time. It is in the quiet time that we set aside to be alone with God. And we, in that quiet time, we get to know 
what God is, where God is leading us, what God is saying to us through his word. You know, Jesus was real good at that. Jesus was very good at having quiet time. You see in the New Testament where he would oftentimes get away. It was his quiet time to pray and to talk to his father because whenever Jesus went for quiet time, he was, he was inspired. He was energized. He, he got what he needed in order to face what he was going through. This, this idea of uh, the abundant life, this idea of overflowing life, I want to again say to you that sometimes and many times, in order to really have the fullness of the abundant living, of the overflowing life, you got to empty yourself. You got to empty yourself. And you got to learn from Jesus. You stay connected by quiet time, prayer. Because prayer is the real source of our connection. And remember, prayer does not prevent us from feeling despair. Prayer does not, does not in any way guarantee that we won't be defeated. Prayer will not in any way exclude us from depression. As Christians, we go through defeat, we go through despair, we go through depressions, we go through failures like anybody else. But prayer helps us as believers to be able to manage those things without them managing us. Prayer helps us that when our spiritual garments of life is unraveling, prayer becomes the hem of our garments that keeps us intact. When we find ourselves becoming unglued because of situations and struggles and storms, prayer becomes the very thing that keeps us sealed. I love what David talks about in Psalm 40. I waited patiently upon the Lord, and he heard my cry, and he inclined unto me. See, it is prayer, really, that helps us to make it through those overwhelming, those over-anxious, those overloading moments. That prayer helps you and I to remain in a sense of calmness when chaos is all around us. Prayer helps us not to act on our fears. Prayer helps us not to act on our frustrations. Prayer helps us to stay grounded when the things of life and when life is shaking the very ground that we are on. Prayer helps us to stay connected when it's so easy to disconnect. Sometimes life can almost get the best of you, but it will never get the best of God in you if you stay grounded. Life will try to get the best of you, but it can't get the best of God in you if you stay connected. Even Christ knew that he needed to stay connected to the Father. And even though he was the Son of God, but he knew he had to stay connected to the Father because he knew that overflowing and abundant life was all about staying connected. Let me just encourage you today to believe and walk in the promises of God that he did come that you could have abundant life, overflowing life. But you got to remember that in order to walk in that abundance, you may have to empty yourself. Empty yourself of your fears. Empty yourself of the pain of your past. Empty yourself of the suspicions. Empty yourself of those things that may get in your way. And you got to make sure that you are intentional in your prayer life to stay rooted and stay connected so that you can walk in that abundance and that overflowing life. I want to challenge you, wherever you are, whatever you are experiencing today, I want to challenge you to be intentional in emptying yourself be intentional 
and finding that quiet time. Be intentional in making sure that you are intentionally abiding in him and he's abiding in you. Be intentional that you want to stay connected through prayer because you know that if you stay connected to him, you're going to produce more fruit. And if you disconnect from him, you're going to die spiritually. I want to encourage you to do that. I want, I want you to walk in overflow and not walk in being overwhelmed. And I promise that you can do that if you walk in the abundant living and the overflowing life. Tell me, I am I want to encourage you. Make it a habit to spend some quiet time with God. Stay connected. Stay focused. Walk in the overflow. Not in the overwhelm. Let the overflow help you manage the overwhelm. Well, listen, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next week.